All right, everybody, we're back at the new snake eater shop. As you can hear, possibly, our new air conditioning system is working mint. It's been 100 degrees like two, three days a week uh, here in Texas, and we keep the shop at a nice, cozy 75, 78 degrees. It's pretty, pretty awesome. Um, I figure we're gonna give you guys a little update video today, kind of show you what's going on, tell you why the shop looks like absolute hell and uh, kind of zoom in a little bit and show you what's been going on with our C10 project, which we were kind of dubbing the Daily Driver Big Block C10. Um, so yeah, let's get right into it. As you can see, like I said, the shop is an absolute mess. Why? Well, we moved three times in four years in Hawaii, and then we've moved three times in two years in Texas and we're finally in a shop where I feel like we have a massive amount of space. It's climate controlled. It's got almost everything we need except for power. And so we made the decision to invest in a new storage system. We've got pallet racks. Since we've got 20 foot high walls now, we can use a forklift and go up about 14, 15 feet. So we got the rack systems in order to do that from a previous tenant. And so basically what that means is we have opened every box in the shop, every storage, everything, and we had it all laid out on the floor. And a lot of it is still laid out and we're really going to try to dial it in and get it nice and usable and professional. And the reason we want to do that is, is this back third of this shop here is actually going to be a fabrication area. We've got a bunch of welding tables. We've picked up a uh, CNC mill, we've got CNC plasma cutters, we've got a bunch of welders and a bunch of shit so that we can do some really cool stuff with all the projects that we're going to be working on and that we're currently working on. Um, now with regards to Big Block Daily C10, you can check this out real quick. Bill's been getting after it. Basically, there I'll let him talk about it, but there was like, like all these old trucks, it's probably had five or six owners with varying degrees of how much they loved it and wanted to improve upon it. It looks like it's had about two, three paint jobs possibly, and maybe five different radio configurations. But Phil is taking the time and going through every single wire in the engine bay. We're not trying to do tuck harness or anything like that, but we just need it clean, sharp, and safe. And so I'll let Phil tell you a little bit about kind of what is involved in that, what kind of bullshit he's tackled but when you see the amount of stuff that has come out of there and as of right now while it's unplugged it's all still functional it's crazy to think how much wires have come out of it that just were in there existing that we didn't even need so come on check this out i'm gonna zoom in here so <clears throat> mostly it's usually when it comes to the engine harness a lot of people like to clip stuff off leave them naked, put a buck connector on top of a buck connector for a wire that's like this long, in which that's been happening in this truck. Most people are afraid of wiring. It's really not that scary at all, whatsoever. As long as you take the time, read the diagrams, you can get everything nice, knocked out, quick and easy, stuff like that. <clears throat> what I'm trying to do is kind of go with the factory kind of sort of setup of the wiring. Of course, I'm putting my little cues and my little tricks into it myself just to make it look cleaner uh right it up here like a regular uh, chevrolet truck where it usually goes that's where the factory stuff went what i'm gonna do is route it down here make it cleaner the engine wiring goes to the engine wiring electric fans go to the electric fans and just keep it two separate things and also have the uh, serviceability too so if I'm, look over here this right here say something ever ever happens and say the fans catch fire or something else like that you can just reach in and just disconnect it and be done with it and then you can also come in uh, once i get the battery all set up in here for quick connections something ever happens on the main harness get it pop it right off so you don't have to worry about smoking your whole whole harness so what i'm trying to do is fix someone else's mistake, which I'm used to, it happens. Everybody learns <clears throat> and just make it a whole lot cleaner because you can see how much wiring I've already taken out 
of the engine bay. Big old bowl of spaghetti. And you don't ever want a big old bowl of spaghetti. That's a big old fire hazard right there underneath your, underneath your hood. So, like I said, what I'm trying to do is just make everything clean, serviceable. You got relays here. Another one's gonna go here for the electric fans. You have fuses for our electric fans right here and here. This is for the Holly system right here. So if anything ever happens, you can just unhit, unhook something, get it taken care of, and then probably do some replumbing here on the radiator too. Because down here, it's hard to see. I might have to move these transmission lines too because you don't want your radiator hose rubbing in transmission lines because it rubs a hole into your flow radiator hose and then you'll have a leak, which is not fun. But as you can see right here too, this is the front headlight harness. I'm trying to get everything all nice and pretty and tucked in so you don't have to worry about a whole lot of things. Shorten up wires, that kind of thing too. And then we plan on <coughs> getting her all cleaned up uh, putting the original hubcaps back on the wheels, getting her all nice and pretty and shined up, and then we'll be able to cruise around and thing. All right, so if you guys want to take a look, you can see we got our Detroit Steel. It's, uh, it's also Mob Steel on Instagram. So we picked up our 20 inch Steelies. We went with a 20 by eight wheel on it. The overall tire diameter matched OEM. I always liked the way it looked. We dropped it down a couple inches uh, we still need to work on the stance a little bit, but we're going to probably drive it around, break the suspension in, and then kind of see where everything falls. This truck is very front heavy with the all iron big block in the front and then obviously just a truck bed in the back. So after it all kind of breaks in, we're going to take full advantage of that QA1 adjustability and really get it in a nice low but daily drivable stance to where we're not having to dodge potholes and stuff. Where we live out here in the country, there is potholes. Sometimes you gotta go on the side of the road to let people pass. And we don't want this truck to be like trailer queen status. We wanna be able to drive it and drive it like a normal truck. So as you can see, I think it already looks pretty killer. It needs a full alignment all the way around. We still gotta do some measurements. The suspension is all just kind of bolted together and it's snug and torqued and ready, but we gotta get all the geometry dialed in before we can start dialing it. So if you come in here, take a look. This is just some kind of pet project stuff that we're working on. The seat's out and unbolted right now, but a previous owner cut the dash, which we, we cannot figure out why. I mean, this was the reason for cutting and drilling four holes into a pristine OEM dash with the original paint. Now I'm not like a diehard like you know keep it originals and numbers matching like obviously you know the engine the suspension we've changed all that but it's like damn why did you do that uh, and they did it it's not good it's not a clean cut so what I'm trying to avoid doing is having to weld on the dash because then that would require us repainting it and right now even though it is a little rough in the paint department on the interior it's actually still in really good shape. There's still factory markings, you know, the, the little paint markers that they used as it went through quality control. And I really kind of like that stuff. So we're, we've got our 3D scanner out. We've 3D scanned that area. And I'm gonna see if between 3D printing, CNC plasma, and using our three axis mill, if we can't come up with some kind of like a, a plate that will hold a single din radio, um, something that looks a little more era appropriate and also kind of enables us to not have to weld on the car. So maybe we can use the existing bolt holes or something like that. So we've sprayed the interior down in that section. We've 3D scanned it. We're gonna be pulling that into Fusion 360 and kind of building a, a mesh off of it. And then we're gonna go in and kind of just start spitballing some ideas at it and see what we can come up with that can hold a single din radio. Like I said, maybe even an OEM replica, um, something to that effect. While not throwing off the OEM looks, it's going to be a challenge, but we've got some new toys. We've got a bunch of stuff that, you know, we want to kind of learn to use. And so we're just going to have fun with it. We're going to see 
what it is and really at the end of the day I don't think I don't think anything's worse than cutting an original dash for a like $50 head unit it doesn't even have the dolphins that swim on it or anything like that like and there was a CD stuck in it if I remember right so it was like yeah, I mean, this is from 2014. They've made, oh, this is only 10 years old. That means somebody cut the dash, like, probably right before I bought the truck in 2016. And it's like, damn. You, they made OEM replicas, like, with Bluetooth and aux cables in 2014, I'm pretty sure. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, you know, we're kind of going back and forth on whether we're going to paint the cab and bumpers or cab or bumpers to match the wheels um, and then we're also kind of talking about maybe changing the wheel color they're powder coated from the factory this well, that kind of bone white color um, but we're talking about maybe matching some of the browns um, on the interior of it because it kind of goes with some of the primer colors that are on the exterior and so we're going to play with it a little bit maybe hire somebody do some renderings and just kind of have some fun take a look but that's pretty much it for now. The shop is an absolute mess, but we're working on it. We're getting stuff in here to get it organized. And I think it's better to take the time and work through this crap and then have a really nice clean cut professional shop where we can actually pull cars in here and do good work rather than keep doing what we've had to have been doing while I was in the army, which is constantly moving and just throwing crap in boxes, piling it up, losing stuff constantly whatever like we have like 15 caulking guns because you can never find it so hopefully we'll put an end to that but as you guys can see the area over here is where we're doing injectors and stuff is up and running and it's we're pretty well satisfied with it thinking it's looking pretty dialed but I'll tell you the best thing is is we're gonna spend this summer in Central Texas in the AC and that's awesome